Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining me again. I'm your movie guru, back with another review. Um, I'm going to start it off with a little preface. Uh, I'm responding to some of your guys' feedback. Uh, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to give you uh, <clears throat> a summary of my review and then my rating right up front. Uh, so for those of you, you know, who don't really want to watch, you know, a 10-minute or a 12-minute video or even longer, uh, and you just want, you know, the basics of should I go see this movie or not, I'll give that to you up front, and then if you want to hear more of the specifics why, you know, then you can continue to watch the whole video. Uh, but uh, just to start it off with that, uh, the film that I'm going to be reviewing today is none other than Dr. Sleep. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it is the sequel to The Shining uh, nearly a full 40 years uh, after The Shining first came out, uh, famously directed by uh, Stanley Kubrick and uh, based off the novel by Stephen King. Uh, I'll tell you right off the bat, it's got an average uh, score of 77% on Rotten Tomatoes by critics uh, with an average score of 7 out of 10. And then it's got a 93% rating on Rotten Tomatoes so far for those who have seen the advanced screening. Uh, and the average audience rating is a 9.5 out of, or a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Uh, so my rating, I'll tell you right off the bat, I gave it an 8.5 out of 10, two thumbs way up. Uh, they did a really good job expanding on the story from The Shining and bringing you into this new world, uh, terrifying moments, scary moments, keeping you on the edge of your seat, and 100% leaving you wanting more. Uh, definitely something to go see in theaters. So that's my summary. You know, if you just want to uh, turn a video off after that and go and see it, then more power to you. Uh, getting into a little bit more why here, uh, I like to say that, I've said this before, but uh, one of the common problems that I see with sequels is sometimes you will see uh, a sequel being made where it's too much like the original. Uh, you know, they saw a formula that worked, and so they try so hard, you know, to recreate that, and, you know, they kind of force it. And so it ends up, you know, losing the magic of what the first one had because they try, they're try they trying so hard to recreate it, and it doesn't come naturally. Uh, so that's one problem. Uh, sometimes I've seen sequels come to the problem of where they really didn't have much to say and where you can see that the film was obviously just something that they did because they saw this was popular. Hey, how can we make more money out of this? You know, kind of wring money from this rock. And those are the films you'll watch. And uh, you, once it's over, you're like, okay, that was an hour too long or that was 45 minutes too long because the story isn't really there. You know, there, there's nothing new. There's nothing fresh that they're bringing. It's just kind of... Uh, you know, 30 minutes of plot and then the film drags on because they had to make a whole film off of uh, material that wasn't new. Uh, so sometimes that happens. Uh, not to say that uh, a film, a uh, sequel always has to bring a fresh idea. Uh, some action movies work very good off this uh, formula where it's okay, not so much that we're bringing this new idea, uh, it's you know, our action hero was dropped in a situation and he's got to fight these bad guys to save the day. Okay, and then the sequel, it's going to be in this other situation and he's got to fight the bad guys to save the day. And some of those, you know, they work very well and they're very entertaining and they're good movies because, you know, that's uh, what you go to see. Uh, one of the films that or franchises that I can think of like this and by no means it's not the only one. Uh, but one that most recently comes to mind is the John Wick series. Uh, not to say that each film doesn't add on a little bit more, and it does add uh, uh, more to the story, and it, it, it tells us more about Wick, but a lot of it is just, okay, here's Wick in another situation, and he's going to do what he does, and you're really excited to see him do what he does. Uh, getting back into Dr. Sleep, uh, I phrase this as the sequel that I did not know I needed. Uh, the Shining, how it ended and what it did was a rather complete package. Uh, it's a very famous movie. Uh, uh, it's to, I think to call it a cult classic would be to underrate the film. 
but it never really resonated with me that way. You know, I thought it was, you know, a good horror film. I enjoyed it, but, you know, I was never a fanatic of it, uh, like some people have become. Uh, what this film in Dr. Sleep does, um, the only other film, and I'm sure it's not the only one, but it's the only one that's coming to mind right now, uh, that does something similar to what this film does is uh, what The Chronicles of Riddick does uh, with Pitch Black. Uh, the famous films with Vin Diesel. Uh, Pitch Black had an idea and a theme uh, and The Chronicles of Riddick is completely different from that film. It, it, it's almost hard to believe that, you know, they're connected even, that they're in the same universe. It's like the only similarity, uh, but or the only connecting point of those two films together is the anti-hero, the protagonist. Uh, other than that, you know, the style, the message, the theme, uh, all of that is completely different. And whereas The Shining was uh, a horror film that was very much based on uh, the elements and uh, the environment, uh, this film completely, it, even though it still has some of those elements, uh, it takes that narrative and says, okay, how can we bring a fresh story to this? How can we expand on this world? How can we uh, look at some things and, and, and bring something new to the table? And I thought they did a really great job with that. Uh, not to say that, you know, they did it perfectly. Uh, there's a couple scenes I can remember vividly that I wish they would have done better uh, that I do think uh, took away from the film overall. Uh, but I think they did a really great job uh, with the plot and the storytelling. Uh, this is, you know, a horror film that I believe 100% will stick with you. Um, just uh, the themes that they explore uh, and, you know, the, the world building that they uh, do. And, you know, it, it, it's something that sticks with you. Uh, the, the lore is like, you know, it, the, the best way I can describe it is uh, it, it really was like uh, reading a book and where you get enveloped into this world and you want to know more about the characters inside of it. And, you know, it paints a picture uh, of this reality that, you know, is similar to our own, but not quite like our own. And, and you, it really draws you in and you want to know more about it. Uh, Ewan McGregor, I think he does a great job. Uh, like I said, he, uh, he's a fine actor. He does a good job selling the role. And uh, Rebecca Ferguson, I think she does a great job as well at uh, playing uh, the bad guy. Uh, and I, I say that uh, because in these films, especially horror films, a lot of times you will, uh, they have these you know generic bad guys or generic bad creature or, you know, something that's motivated for evil sake. And I thought they did a good job not doing that here, uh, where they made it okay. Obviously, this thing's motivated by something. Uh, but, you know, let's give a little bit of personality. Let's add something else to the story. Uh, and, you know, I really enjoyed that. I will say, uh, like I said, I give it an eight and a half out of ten. Uh, if not for Midsummer, uh, I would definitely say this is the best. Uh, horror film that I saw all year. Uh, it's I think it's rather uh, amazing that this one is slated to come out November 7th. Uh, I got to see it in October. Uh, it, it really feels like uh, this should have been a, a Halloween release, uh, given the fact that that you know this is why I say one of the best horror films this year, and I would say in quite a while. Uh, Stephen King fans, you know, I, I think you will really love this adaptation and uh, horror fans in general that like uh, a good, deep story. And, and I think that's what the best uh, horror films, uh, you know, I, I've talked a lot about films that stick with you, uh, but horror films especially, uh, one of the things that draws people in and gives it that kind of cult following is when it has a good lore. Uh, you know, when you think about uh, telling scary stories at a campfire or, or, you know, that type of nature or reading scary stories or, you know, you think about classic villains, uh, all of them 
it has some type of story that's very unique to that villain and you know that differentiates them between everybody else and you know for that reason that's why you remember them you know either that or they were first uh i can think uh, vividly of uh michael michael myers and then jason uh, from the Friday the 13th films. I wouldn't say that they so much had this fantastic lore, but uh, they were became, they were like some of the most prominent uh, slashers, and so they started the whole, really kicked off the whole slasher genre. Uh, but when you think of, of creatures like uh, the Boogeyman, or, you know, more recently like the Babadook, uh, or, you know, even in the Conjuring films, when uh, some of the demons they deal with, uh, what really pulls you in is when it has a good backstory, you know, a good lore, uh, you know, things like Slender Man, all those type of things. The the lore between it, behind it all, that's what uh, resonates with you uh, and, and makes you remember it. Because then, you know, every Halloween, people are thinking of Michael Myers because that's, you know, Halloween's his thing. Friday the 13th, people are thinking of Jason because that's his backstory. And if you were thinking of, of, of dream killers or, you know, things haunting your dreams, you're thinking of Freddy Krueger. So, uh, that said, like I said, I really enjoyed the film. Uh, very happy to have seen it. Uh, this one, I, I really think uh, going to the theater enhances it. Uh, just to see the cinematography, which I also think they did a great job with. Uh, really cool, really uh, slick type of film. And being in a theater, I think, really sets the tone, uh, puts you in the environment uh, that the movie, to, to, that you have to be in to really appreciate the film. Uh, because this film is, is really trying to transport you to another world, uh, I, I think being in a theater, you know, no lights on, focus just on this big screen, lots of sound, uh, it's really going to help in putting you in that world, that narrative, that state of mind you need to be to really appreciate this film. Uh, if you like horror films, if you like great stories, uh, definitely go and see this one. Uh, it is rated R. Uh, it is violent. Uh, so just be uh, cognizant of that. Uh, thank you guys again for watching. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button if you like what you see. Write me a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'll have another review up soon. I actually saw uh, Terminator Dark Fate tonight. Uh, for those of you, a lot of you know Terminator 1 is my probably my favorite, most favorite movie of all time. Uh, so that review is definitely going to be coming up soon. Uh, thanks again for you guys watching. Have a good weekend.